Jake, when would you do an upsetson? Uh, anytime your opponent uh, cuts into an open corner, preferably if you're in a, uh, a point forward guard like Blue Grox. With the distance and timing, is there a particular moment or distance at which it is appropriate or not appropriate? Um, distance, to be honest, I don't think about a whole lot. Uh, as far as timing goes, um, it needs to be as the as the attacker is committed to the cut. If you, if you move into the position before the commitment is whole, they can you know, re-vector and then you get hit. Uh, you need a cut. So you're basically like cannon of sets in. I'm here in right blue. You seize the opening. You decide to take the opening. Back. Ah, okay. Right. Second way I die. He sees the opening. He takes the opening. Back. We both die. Uh, I'm sets in. Take the opening. Wind into left ox. I can do it with a step out. Right, but I find that it's hard to land the thrust. I can do it with a step in, but it's too easy to end up in the wrong in the wrong spot. So I prefer just to hit twist. And then step with the thrust so that the body drives the line on your arm. Uh, then of course you can do it to all the various quarters, but that's your most common, right? Uh, for example, it's not common that it's not common that this is going to happen. Very few people will actually do that, right? Uh, but it works the same way. Hip twist. And then, uh, here to the hips is a little more common, particularly if you're in a low guard. Uh, right here, for example. So you can give them the hip. You can give them the hip, right? And as it comes in, come into a plow. Well, you want video, you want the uh, so the arms need to be structurally stable, right? Um, but it, you're not using your arms for range particularly. So, for example, as you're sitting on this side and winding up, right? I want the structure to be coming out here from my chest, always away from my chest. Like I don't want to be here. There's no structure here. So, as I turn my hip into it, the arms come forward. And I can post out with my arms, especially if it's coming down really hard. If he's thrusting, I don't need to. But if it's coming down really hard, right? The arm's really going to come out stable to make sure that the point stays in the space and that it can absorb the energy. I'm going to get my thumb under the flat so the cross will catch what hits. Uh, and I'm going to avoid, uh, slowly, right? I'm going to avoid getting my arms far from my body because the further from my body towards him I extend my arms, the more I compromise my fingers. Right. So I actually want to be away from myself sideways a little bit. There, and then. So, uh, what is it that protects your hands while you're doing this? Um, I mean the cross primarily. Uh, it's the cross and then the shape of the arms, right? Um, right like in the higher, the higher you get your arms, a lot of people will tell you to protect your hand, put your arms higher, right? The problem with that, set it in place. Right? The problem with that is that the higher I put my arms, I'm safer, I'm safer, I'm safer, but he's not in any danger either because I haven't stabbed him, yeah. right? So, so the higher I go, the more I have to descend my blade, which creates a scissoring effect, right? So actually the trick is not to go high at all. Um, if you need to extend the arm to structure, you go out. But you want to stay at approximately eye level to your opponent, uh, maybe a little bit higher than that. Okay, so here, there, and we see there's the whole finger's width of distance inside of there. So here, here. Okay, so you're not going out too far no. um, because that would unbalance you and weaken your structure? Um, so if you go if you go too far forward, right, like, okay, I'll try here. If I'm coming far forward like this, um, see the, from above, this angle here, this is not, this is not strong. This is strong, right? So it's, uh, it's like push-ups, right? right? Like, if I'm gonna do, you know, both hands together, like here I'm holding a sword, this is strong. That is not as strong, although it's not bad, yeah. right? That's terrible. Yeah. And this is what most people are trying to do, or at least a lot of people are trying to do. So, so it's a, like you're keeping it in front of your sternum? Right, yeah, so exactly, so the, the, your stability is always here. So if you're gonna move the weapon to your side, you know, if you turn the hip, turn the sternum out, your arms still project from the sternum. Okay. Right? So if, I, if I'm a uh, smaller or uh, less uh, 
powerful uh, uh -huh. fencer. Um, how, how can I um, ensure that I do a correct absetson against like an, a heavy incoming cut? So the, you have even less wiggle room than I do in your structure. So I'm a fairly strong guy. Like, like I can do that. Yep. Um, so I can get away with like collapsing my left arm a little bit, which I really shouldn't do, but right. I'm lazy, <laughs> so I do. Uh, if you're a smaller fencer, don't collapse that left arm at all. You want both arms. It should be um, equally, equally extended. So, right? so I can post out like you yeah. were showing. Yeah, like here at about three quarter right there. Bring it in. Uh, uh, oh. situations my bone structure is much stronger than their muscle right yep. there are fencers that that is less true for yep um but if they're actually cutting you that means they're going to hit you with the weak of their sword you're going to catch in the upsets and with the strong of your sword so it should all work out there would need to be a massive difference in weight and strength i mean like like mariana lopez versus like bigger than Josh Paris okay. uh, for it, to, not, for it to, to be overcome. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. Uh, anything else you wanted to say about Obsetson? Um, structure and don't overthink it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.